Hi, and so let's take a quick look at the material graph editor that exists in Keyshot 8. So if you have your open scene here, or maybe you have your scene where you uh, have your text up like this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just simply close up this uh, space so that I can get enough space where I can work with. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just simply create the new geometry which we're going to use to test out how the material graph works. I'm going to go ahead and double click this so I can jump into the material editor and then I'm going to simply hit on material graph. With our material graph open, I'll simply explain how this material graph works. Well, first things first, when you have an object, your object has two nodes which is the surface and the geometry. The surface basically deals with every other thing that has to do with the material texturing and, and every other thing that has to do with the uh, kind of material you're about to apply, the kind of texture you're about to apply. All of those things are tied into the surface. And these things include the diffuse, the glass, liquid, metal, and so on. So all of these things are tied directly into the surface. The geometry is a new um, feature that has been uh, plugged into Keyshot 8. And now we can go ahead and add displacement flakes and bubbles. You can see those in the channel where I made a video about how you can uh, make use of this. But your geometry is where you can apply certain geometry nodes here. So for this video, I'm going to go ahead and just simply talk about this. So your diffuse is one of the material types that exist in Keyshot 8 or maybe in any other uh, form of Keyshot and you can change it like we've talked about earlier. You can change it to any of this and then you're also going to find out that you have color, bump map and opacity. Your color, bump map and opacity are different um, types of textures that you can apply to it. So. How should we get this straight? First of all, you need an object, which is the cylinder here. Your object needs a material, which should be plugged into the surface. And then you need textures that would have to drive the material. So the textures which we're going to make use of is one, splotches, which I'm just going to click drag out. And then I'm going to go over and click and drag out another one, let's say the mesh. These are basically textures and some of them are quite uh, procedural while others are not. So for this, what I have to do now is I'm simply going to just click and drag and drop this on the color node. Once I drop this on the color node, you automatically see that this will automatically adapt to the color that I have added to this. So the good way to move around this is to simply double click. And then I can come through and change the scale of what uh, the splotches is. We can also go all the way up to punching numbers just to get what we're looking for. So now I've added the splotches uh, as much as I want. I can still come through and increase the radius and this is where the uh, procedural nature of some of these textures come into play. Let's explore other things as well. The bump map is also is one of those attributes you can make use of in a given material that can punch up or add bumps to your object. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and just simply drag another node out of here and connect it to the bump map. Once I connect it to the bump map, you automatically see that we begin to see bumps in our scene. Right now our object is totally flat and now I'm going to go ahead and just simply click, drag and drop. Now we've added the bump map, I'm going to go ahead, double click this, come over to where we have textures and scroll all the way down to find our bump map. I'm clicking on the bump map so that I can be able to edit the texture details that exist in the bump map. Now I can go through and just simply increase the bump size. So let's just go and give it a value of 10. So if we look at this object very well, you also understand that some parts of this object are not popping out. One of the uh, ways to actually check out this is by simply coming on. One of the ways to check out this is by simply coming over to the color. And at this point, we'll go ahead and just simply change the color of the object that we're working with. So for this, I'm going to go ahead and just change it to a color like this. 
and then now if i uh, zoom in a bit closer you find out that there is some sort of bumpiness happening around our object i'll go ahead and just simply unplug this by by selecting it and pressing delete on our keyboard and now you can see that there are differences other ways you can check out what's going on in your material is by simply selecting it and pressing c on your keyboard and then you can just see what uh, color information you're having i'm going to go ahead again and press and press c and then we can have that So bumps are mostly, in some cases, mo bumps are mostly camera based. So if you want to, uh, let's say, add some sort of bumpiness to your object, you can go ahead and practice and see what works for you. Other things we need to look at is um, the opacity map. So I'm going to go ahead and just select this same um, object and I'm going to plug it into our opacity attribute. And if I click and go over to the textures and go towards opacity let's have this selected you would find out that now we have our object uh, being uh, transparent so you can see that we can go th and look through this part of this object another way we can get a very good opacity is if I come through and I change this color all the way to black and let's just select our bump map for a while and just turn it off or you can do that by just turning it off from here so you can now notice that we have opacity all around our object this is one of the most uh, easiest way of bowing holes or maybe uh, creating transparent looks in your object other things you can do is you can go ahead and mix much different objects together or different um, materials together or textures as well so for this what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and unlink these objects just for the purposes of this tutorial i'm going to go ahead and just pick this mesh uh, texture and i'm going to plug it into the opacity now you see we've regained our object but now I want to go ahead and just simply turn up the scale a little bit. So like I said earlier, different textures, different textures have different attributes, but they are all similar. For example, if I select, uh, when I selected this, you find out that the uh, attributes or the properties that I had was a bit different. And if I double click this, you find out that the attribute, uh, the properties it has is also different. So it's a good practice for you to go ahead and just look around them, see what works for you, and then you can go ahead and play with them. So I'm just simply going to double click this. Let's increase the scale a little bit more so that we can have a much more visual image of what we're working with. So now you can see because I attached this to the opacity, here becomes transparent. So this will save you a ton of time trying to create some sort of effect in your scene and this is basically how you get started with creating uh, or playing with the material graph in KeyShot. Other things you need to know is once I get to double click this object, I can also choose to change the color of the material by having this selected and then come through and turn this off. And if I come back to properties, I can now go ahead and just change. And if I come back to properties, I can now go ahead and change the color the way I want it. But once you have a texture running in the background, the color becomes obsolete. You can still go ahead and attach a different uh, texture to your background as well, which you can simply do by just coming over to this part of your graph. Let's right click and let's add another texture. If you have textures that you've made, maybe in Photoshop or any 2D um, image painting app or image creation app, you can go ahead and just simply drag and drop them here or you can choose to bring them in using the background node. This checker button here si simply suggests that you can add textures. So I have this texture which I've uh, downloaded from the internet. I'm just going to go ahead and just simply click, drag and maybe replace the background with it.
the same thing happens if you want to simply change the original color which it has as black you can also do the same thing by just simply clicking and dragging or dragging and dropping your object from wherever you have it and just position it here and there you have it this is basically how you get a, a quick start to creating stuff in your material graph that exists in KeyShot. so let's just quickly recap first and foremost you need the material that has to be applied to an object and this material should be applied to the surface if you just want the surface to be distorted next thing you need the texture that has to drive what material or what surface material you want to use other things we can also get is you can get other textures and tie them up to your texture type that exists in KeyShot. And so if you have comments or questions about what we've just talked about and maybe there are certain things that you don't really get a hang of, please drop them in the comment section down below. If you are new to this channel, I would really love it if you can just simply subscribe and give us a shout out. And if you have love this video or maybe you've learned a thing or two from this video please simply click the like button and don't forget to share with your friends and i'll see you guys next time peace